Welcome back, hosers. I am sitting in my greenhouse. As you can see, it is a mess, and that is because during the hotter part of the year, for most of us who don't have big electric fans pushing air through our greenhouse, it becomes just a really hot shed. The video I'm doing today is going to be five things to consider before you buy a greenhouse. And I just, before we really get into it, None of that is me having buyer's remorse. So here's five things to consider before you buy a greenhouse. So the first thing is, why are you buying a greenhouse? Um, and I'm not going to say that because it's cool isn't a perfectly reasonable answer, because it is. If you just want to get a greenhouse because it's cool, go for it. But um, Eventually, you're going to try to use your greenhouse for stuff. And if you plan ahead, you're more likely to buy a greenhouse that's good for whatever stuff winds up being. So if you're getting a greenhouse for season extension, then something like mine, this is a perfectly good greenhouse for you. It's going to rock out in the spring and in the fall. It's going to get too cold in the winter. It's going to get too hot in the summer. But you're extending your seasons. You can start things a little bit earlier. And grow them on a little bit later. If you wanted to do tropical plants year-round, this would be a horrible greenhouse for you. This is not your greenhouse. The size of your greenhouse is going to wind up being important. Most of the time, you're going to be a lot more likely to regret going too small than you are to regret going too big. So my advice to you is to get the biggest greenhouse that you can afford to do whatever it is you want to do because it's going to get out of hand. That's part of the magic and joy of having a greenhouse. So once you've decided what you want your greenhouse for, then number two is you're going to want to figure out the location and how much space you can devote to your greenhouse. Your location should include considerations of sun and shade. And depending on what you're going to use your greenhouse for, both could be important. If you're doing season extension, you're really only worried about your sun exposure in the spring and the fall. If you have good sun in your site in the spring and the fall, it doesn't matter what's going on in the winter and the summer, right? You're just extending your season. But if you wanted to do year-round greenhouse growing, well, then you have to look at a lot of things. And you might even benefit from some summertime shade because... Oh my gosh, greenhouses are so good at trapping heat during the daytime. You're going to want to site your greenhouse where you get the sun you need when you need it. If you want to do season extension or even winter growing, it's best if the, the long direction of your greenhouse is going east to west. Because that way, as your sun tracks to the south, or if you're in the southern hemisphere to the north of your greenhouse, it's going to be tracking along the long side of your greenhouse and you're maximizing the total amount of energy you're getting from the sun that way. Number three is you're going to want to look at what type of greenhouse you're going to get and what material you want it to be made out of. A uh, glass greenhouse is going to be the most expensive greenhouse you can get and actually grass, glass is not the best insulator. It does let a lot of light through which is great but you're going to lose a lot of heat at night and in the winter. If you want a, a hard frame greenhouse, you could go with a poly polycarbonate shell like I've got here. The top is, the roof is twin wall polycarbonate, which is awesome. And you're going to want to go for like 8 mil or thicker if you want to do year round growing. Unfortunately, the sides of the greenhouse are single wall polycarbonate. And that's not a good insulator. I'm actually going to be putting this insulation in my greenhouse. So that's next week's video. Make sure that you tune in for that. Um, subscribe if you're not subscribed. That way you won't miss it. Because the materials that your greenhouse is made of aren't all that determines what you can do with your greenhouse. I painted it white to keep a cooler in the summer. But this is clear plastic. So the, the clarity of your materials and the thickness of your materials are things that you can tailor after the fact. Another material you could use is 
polypropylene. You could do a like a hoop house sort of thing with just um, polypropylene film. And you can double that up as well, which actually adds a fair bit of insulation if you put a blower layer between your film layers. So there's a lot you can do in terms of material. And this isn't intended to be exhaustive in terms of what you should get for what situation. I'm just laying out some options there and letting you know that what you get your greenhouse made from is going to determine what you can use it for to a certain extent. So consider the materials before you buy. I wouldn't have bought this greenhouse if I were buying the perfect greenhouse, but it's pretty close to the perfect greenhouse for me for the price. And that brings us pretty smoothly to number four, which is your budget. How much can you afford to spend on your greenhouse? And again, I just want to really push, press home, spend as much as you can get away with on your greenhouse. It's the sort of thing where you're more likely to regret spending less because you'll wish you had more once you get into it. When I found this greenhouse for $1,300, I was like, sold. And you're like, hold on, Dustin. Just a minute ago, you said, buy the most expensive greenhouse you can afford. Why didn't you get a better greenhouse? Well, that's because the, the, the kit itself was only about half of the cost. And I actually haven't finished spending everything I'm going to spend on this greenhouse. The foundation of your greenhouse is typically not included in the kit. And if you want something even semi-permanent, you're going to have to build it on a foundation. A good foundation is going to give your greenhouse um, st stability and structural integrity and can really tie it down to the ground. It might even add a little bit of insulation value. Wood is a good insulator. I built my foundation out of wood. I only spend about $200 on my foundation if you include the bricks and the gravel that I filled in the rest of the floor with but you can, you can spend quite a bit more. You also want to budget for some sort of shelving for your greenhouse. I need to, I still need to build a workbench that's going to add to my expenses. I just spent a bunch of money on some insulation panels and some horticultural bubble wrap. I went, in addition to the price of the kit, I spent money on automated vents. Buy automated vents. Automate all your vents. Every vent should be automated. Um, so there are a lot of budget items above and beyond the kit that you should expect to spend on. And it may even be worthwhile to ha pay to have someone assemble your kit for you. It took me two days to put this greenhouse together. If you can afford something bigger, you might pay to have it installed and it'll be totally worth it. Uh, it's, there's no shame in having someone do good work for you. And fifth and finally, you're going to want to consider what your maintenance routine is going to need to be. So, um, um, for instance, I don't want to fiddle with my greenhouse all the time. So what I am pushing for is to try to get this to a point where I can do as little as possible and it will still work. And that's why I invested in my automated vents. And it's why I'm going to be installing a solar powered ceiling fan in this greenhouse. Um, make sure you're subscribed if you want to see how that goes. It's why I'm investing in insulation and why I just left my doors open all summer because otherwise I'd have had to open and close the doors as the temperatures changed. It's why I've got these barrels of water here because they are going to slow down heat spikes and heat drops. And also you're going to want to account for things like how am I going to water things in my greenhouse. Um, if your greenhouse is situated away from your home and you plan on watering things with a hose, for instance, you may want to do what I did and actually run a line out from your hose bib to next to your greenhouse or actually inside your greenhouse just to make watering a little bit easier because otherwise it's too easy to put off doing it at all. I want to stress that you are going to want to check your building codes and you may also want to let your insurance company know that you've built a greenhouse on your property so that it can be included in your homeowner's insurance. Uh, depending on your municipality and the size of the greenhouse you get, you may need a building permit for it, especially 
if you put it on a foundation. So here in Logan, Utah, agricultural outbuildings, and a greenhouse qualifies, up to 200 square feet do not require a permit. So I was good, but I did check on that first. And depending on where you are building your greenhouse, make sure you're doing it legally because nothing's going to break your heart like getting it built and getting moved into it and starting to get excited about the greenhouse growing that you can do now and then getting hit with a fine or a takedown order from your municipality. So um, try to avoid that. It's just, it's just sad. All right, so those are five things that are really good to consider before you decide on the greenhouse you're going to buy. Uh, is this an exhaustive list? No. There's so much more you could plan for and think about, but I wanted to keep this video relatively short so that it's, it's useful for those with various attention spans. I just want to say that this is the first of two consecutive greenhouse videos. So if you are interested in greenhouse content, make sure that you've subscribed to my channel. Next week, I'm going to be talking about and showing you what I'm doing to insulate this greenhouse to make it an even better season extender. Because I do actually intend to grow things in my greenhouse in zone six all winter long, if possible. I'm excited about that. If you're excited about it too, um, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and um, hey, like this video. It lets the algorithm know that it's helpful and people should watch it. And um, that's you being helpful too. Hey, thank you for joining me in my garden, and I hope you have a wonderful time in your own.